everybody, lovely to see you and welcome to our fourth week of Lent Reflections. And this evening we're going to look at two stations of the cross. The first one, Jesus carries the cross and the second is when Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. And as before, please um, stop and start this video um, as you feel most helpful. Go back and think about things again. Remember, we're in a period of Lent. This is a time to really think, to examine our relationship with God, and just take some time to see where we are. And whatever comes up for you in our reflection this evening, you can take to God in prayer as we work our way towards Easter Day. So, before I go any further, I want to introduce James, Hello. who's leading the session with me today. So, James, lovely to have you here Thank you. Uh, with me. And um, most people will know you, or well, many people will know you, but can you just introduce yourself and say a little bit about who you are? Sure, yes. Sir. And maybe say something that nobody knows. Right. Uh, <laughs> my name is James Colonet. I've been coming here since 1991. Um, I am normally um, on the, um, one of the members of the choir. Yeah. I'm also a PCC secretary, have been for about um, 12 years, in fact and uh, do a uh, number of other duties as well. Um, not a lot of people may know that the reason I started coming here was um, at a rather difficult time in my life and I re reflected at the time on something that um, somebody who was a mentor to me uh, said, had said several years before that um, in moving to a new area, which I was at the time from another part of London, mm. uh, coming here, that um, it might be um, beneficial to me to start joining the church community. So I kept that under my hat for a few years and then in 1991 I felt in a time of need to be coming to a church and so that's how it started and it's, um, the rest is history as they say. Great, that's a really, um, it's, it's so good to hear how the church became an important part of yes. you um, feeling at home in this neighbourhood and you know helping you through a difficult time. Yes. That's great. So let's let's just prepare ourselves for this evening's reflection. Make so we will settle ourselves now. Let's just say together in the name of God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit we come to you Lord. So I'll pray for us all to begin with. Almighty and everlasting God who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow you, be the example of patience and humility, and also be partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We say, Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Would you at home join in as we say this again in a part, as part of our preparation? Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Amen. James will now give us our first reading, which is from Mark's Gospel which describes Jesus carrying the cross. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to cru crucify him. Can you imagine anything more horrific than walking through the streets carrying a very heavy wooden bar to which your hands will later be nailed and then hauled up to be attached to the upright of a cross, naked with a crowd watching. Now the cross beam Jesus is carrying is very heavy. He is already exhausted, very stressed. As we hear, he's already been subject to abuse and humiliation. And now he carries the implement of his own death, a further part of this awful Roman torture. Yet, we notice that the words that James has just read us from Mark are quite matter-of-fact, they're quite dispassionate. 
he just recalls what happens. No commentary at all. A bit like a legal report. And we might wonder why that is. Maybe the reality of what was happening was too horrific to write about in any other way. But perhaps it just reflects Jesus' acceptance of what was happening to him. The acceptance of what had been long predicted for him. And an acceptance and obedience to his Father's will. Now, of course, we must also forget that Jesus was God and man. He had emotions like us. He cried like us. And we read from the account of the Garden of Gethsemane that he had terrors, but he carried his cross obediently. Now, this is a difficult passage, but I'm wondering where, where it leaves us today as we prepare ourselves for Easter during the time of Lent. And for me, it took me back, reminded me of a reading we had in church recently from Mark's Gospel, where Jesus said to his followers, was, if you want to come with me, you must say no to yourself and take up your cross and follow me. It's a very famous passage, I'm sure all of you have read many times. He says, if you're happy to lose how you live now, then you will find real life. And just to say it in one other way, he says, following me is a decision you, you take that once taken may have consequences. Now it's unlikely that any of us will ever have to bear anything like what Jesus bore. But there may be parts of our, of our lives that we are asked to give up. Parts of our lives which we're attached to that actually make it difficult for us to follow Jesus. And this might be for some of us a cross we have to bear. And of course it'll be different for every single one of us. Sometimes it'll be quite clear what our cross is, in which case Jesus tells us that if we bear it he will support us and strengthen us and he will give us life of fruitfulness. Sometimes it's not clear, and we just need to wait for God to prompt us. I want to finish this reflection with some rather tough words from Tom Wright, who uh, is a theologian who many of you will have read. And he writes, Jesus is not leading us on a pleasant afternoon hike, but on a walk of danger and risk. Or did we suppose that the kingdom of God would mean merely a few minor adjustments in our ordinary lives. James, um, wondering what uh, you made of the, the passage and some of the thoughts that I've um, shared and what, maybe what, what your own reflections on this are. Well, I think that Jesus was leading by example. We, as you say, we. Um, read recently the passage from chapter 8 of Mark's Gospel in which um, Jesus instructs his listeners to um, take up their cross and follow him. Um, Jesus is um, carrying out uh, what he um, commanded his disciples and listeners to do. Um, and it's very much not a just as a do as I say um, instruction, but as a do, do as I do instruction. Yes. Um, that's how I see it, um, and I'm also not surprised if it was an extremely difficult burden for him, because as we know, he was human as well as divine, and we know from many various passages in the Bible that this is so. I mean, he said on the cross as he was dying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Um, so it's perfectly natural and normal to feel anxious, stressed, humiliated, um, while he was doing this, um, so that's how I feel about it. That's really helpful. So, uh, so he gave us a massive sort of lesson in obedience in a way. Yes, a very desperate situation, painful. Mm -hmm. I can't, one more can't ever imagine it. But he was obedient to what his father yes. had required him yes. to do. I think it's very interesting. Life, our, our lives now are so comfortable, aren't they? And I, I have to say, reflecting on my own life, I'm quite attached 
to, to be comfortable and I like to know where I'm going. Yet I know, this is my reflection, it might make some sense to you at home, that, that this kind of comfort and complacency can on occasions um, dull down my faith and can take me away from Christ. So again, it's important to sort of maybe think about what parts of our lives might we need to change? What crosses might, what might we need to bear? And always remembering that Jesus says, you lose your life in order to gain it. So have a think about what that means to you. Stop and pause the video again. Read the passage again. See if God lays anything on your heart. Don't be worried if he doesn't. And don't be worried if he lays things on your heart which feel uncomfortable. Take all of these things to him in prayer. He's waiting and wants to be with us as we grow and change. So we will then just pray together once more. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Will you join us again from home? Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. James will now read our next passage, which is also from Mark, which describes how Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry the cross. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Thank you, James. So we put ourselves back into the experience of Jesus and we realise that by this time on his journey, he would have been absolutely exhausted. But the soldiers didn't want him to die on the road. They wanted the full Roman spectacle. So they looked for someone that they could force to carry the crossbeam for a while. Probably all around people were looking away, looking at their toes, not wanting to be seen. No one wanted to be associated with Jesus, and no one wanted to be called into this situation. But Simon is seen, and he is dragged in to help. So why Simon? Simon whose name we know so well now? Probably because he was from another part of the country, because he looked a bit different. You dress differently. The soldiers probably thought, this one, odd one out will do. He doesn't belong. No one will care. He has no status. So Simon, at this really important moment in Jesus' journey to the cross, joins a row of unexpected people who God has used. We look back over Jesus' very short ministry and we see how he used outcasts and marginalised people to show his gospel, his gospel of inclusion, his gospel of forgiveness, his gospel of grace. We remember the woman caught in adultery, the foreigner by the well, the weak, the disabled, a whole range of people. Now Simon, although he didn't volunteer for this role, found that like others that had gone before him, his life, through being in contact with Jesus, changed. And we have to wonder how amazing it is that Jesus, until his last breath, continued to show us and teach us how he wanted us to live with other people. So James, I was wondering um, what thoughts you had on Simon going to help Jesus and um, anything that's occurred to you as we've been thinking of this? Yes, indeed. Um... I think the first point to make is that, um, yes, it's quite right to say that Jesus must have been completely exhausted. As you see from many churches which actually have the stations of the cross around the building, yeah, yeah. that um, Jesus fell three times yes. um, before Simon was instructed to, uh, to carry the cross for him. Yeah. But it's also quite right to say that um, the Romans didn't want Jesus to die um, before being hauled up onto the cross. They wanted a, a, a living spectacle. Yeah. As to Simon's identity himself, that is significant as well, I think, because he was an outsider, a foreigner. Um, yeah. We see many times in the Bible how Jesus brought them into his story and um, 
refused to um, cast them out just because they were foreign or because they were sinners. Um, we know the story of the, um, how, how do I put it, the lady of, who was not quite as virtuous as um, some people might have said she was, should have been. Right. Um, of course, Matthew himself was a tax collector. Yeah. And of course, there were various references to um, foreigners, such as the Samaritan is probably the best example of that. So I think this is saying something to us. It's a statement of, of Simon, despite his um, um, foreign status, being welcomed in um, as an outsider. Absolutely. And of then being transformed by his contact with Jesus, as we know from other um, passages in the Bible. I think this, um, it, we've we're aware all the way through the Gospels of Jesus um, using people who the establishment thought weren't worth any attention and how he demonstrated his Gospel and his love um, through the, the, these people. And here right at the very end we have it again. And of course it has to make us think ourselves about what our attitudes are to people who might be a bit odd, people who've got a label, people whose society don't see as quite as valuable as others. These are really uncomfortable thoughts, but they're ones I think that, no matter what, are ones that all of us at some level have at different times. That's an uncomfortable thought, and it's one personally, and I urge anyone else listening, that we do take to God in our prayer and our reflection, and we do ask Him to show us how it is that we might love in a more radical way as He has done. Jesus, all the way through the station of the cross, is saying to us, follow me. And by following me, he means, try and do as I do. Try and learn from me how it is that you may love each other in a different way. So, if any of those things mean anything to you, sit and have a think. Turn the video off. Just sit and pause. Ask God what he wants to lay on your heart. Take it to him in prayer. Now, we're, we've reached nearly the end of our time together. Um, hope this has been a useful time and uh, look forward to seeing you again next week. Now, we've reached the end of our time together, so as a way of finishing, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as we finish, we ask God for his blessing. We say, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will be alongside us and guide us through this time of Lent. Help us, Lord, to take up our crosses and follow you. And the bless you of God, who is Father, Son, Son and Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, be with you all tonight and forevermore.